Praise the Lord. Hi friends, welcome back. This would be almost the last ch video on second chapter relations and functions. In this chapter, we are going to solve from miscellaneous exercise, not all the questions, few of the questions which can be asked for your examinations or which is useful for your particularly CET purpose. Okay, so let's not waste our time. You don't need any introduction for this channel. You know it. Let's directly go on to the first question of miscellaneous exercise from relations and functions of first PUC. Okay. Fine. The question you can already see there. Uh, the relation f is defined by f of x is equal to x square for x lying between 0 to 3 and 3x for x lying between 3 to 10. Okay. Then we can uh, notice another function. The relation g given by g of x is equal to x square slight change your x will lie between 0 to 2 and 3x if x lies between 2 to 10. Now the question is show that f is a function but g is not a function. Okay, only slight change you can see is the number 3 here. Here it is from 0 to 3 and 3 to 10 but here it is from 0 to 2 and 2 to 10. Okay, now let's check why f is a function and g is not a function. Is it clear? So let's uh, start the solution. Now let's write the relation f. He has told you f is a relation. So if I start the relation f, we know relation f will have an ordered pair x comma y. Okay. So for x, if I put the value 0, okay, we know y is nothing but f of x. Okay. So you know this. y is equal to f of x. Okay. In this case, if so, this is actually your y. If you put 0 square, 0 square is 0. So this is my first element. Now if we put 1, then it is 1 square, that is 1. If we put 2, then it is 2 square, it is 4. If you put 3, if you put x is equal to 3, then y will be 3 square. Okay, you can either use this relation for x is equal to 3. You can either use this relation, 3 square, which is 9. Or if you, even if you use for this relation, x is equal to 3, 3 into 3. In both the cases, it is 9. Is it clear? Now the function shifts from here to here. So if I put x is equal to 4, then the function will be this. So it is 3, 4 is a 12. Okay. So if you put x is equal to 5, then it is 5, 3 is a, it is 15. Okay. Finally, you can go on until the last element you can check 10. If you put x is equal to 10, then y will be 10 into 3. That is equal to 30. Is it clear? So this is my relation. Now you can see here, this will satisfy all the elements. Now every element from 0 to 10 have images and every element have unique image. Okay, that means this condition or this relation can be treated as a function. Okay, so please write down the condition what I'm going to write. So this is the conclusion I'm going to make. So what is the conclusion? F is real and unique for all the values for x 0 to 10. Okay, actually it started from 0 to 10. 10. So I have written that. Hence, f is a relation. So I have showed that f is a relation. Let me check for the re, uh, relation g. So let us write the relation g in the same way as we did for f. So let us consider. So if I put x is equal to 0, your y is nothing but 0 square. Are you following? So it is 0 square. That is nothing but 0. Now similarly, if you put x is equal to 1, then even for 1 it is 1 lies between 0 to 2. Here it is 1 square. So 1 square is 1. Now, if you put x is equal to 2, remember, please be careful in this step. Here, if you put x is equal to 2, okay, according to this condition, it is 2 square, which is nothing but 4. Okay, but for x is equal to 2 in this case, this is nothing but 3 into 2, which is 6. Okay, and next from elements 3 onwards, you need not worry. For 3, it is 3 3 is a 9 and 4 it is 4 3 is a 12 and so on. Okay, file last element would be if you take x is equal to 10, then y would be 30. Okay, so this completes the relation. Now let us check the condition why this is not a this relation is not a function. Definitely you can please check here. Okay, the element 2 here has two images, 2 has 
2 is going on to 4, 2 is going on to 6 also. This is actually is not valid for a relation to become function. Means one element cannot have two images. So this is the reason this relation will not be treated as a function. Okay. So it is quite simple why we say this is not a uh, function. Okay. Please note it down. These kind of questions can be asked in your CET. Okay. So let us check for the conclusion. So this is the conclusion which you can be written. Your element 2 has two images. Hence, j is not a function. It is not a function, just a relation. Okay, it is just a relation, but not a function. Okay, very simple question. It, it just looks complicated. Okay, looking at the question, it may look complicated, but actually solution is very simple. Okay, fine. Let's move on to the question number 2. So dear students, uh, this is question number 2. If f of x is equal to x square, find f of 1.1 minus f of 1 divided by 1.1 minus 1. Please note it down, dear students. This question is very important for CET. It has been asked twice or more than two times in your examination. And it is also asked in your first PUC main examination. Okay, this is a very important question. Okay, now and very simple one also. Let's see how I'm going to solve it. You can uh, solve it very easily f of x is equal to x square is given. Okay. Now, therefore, I want f of 1.1 minus f of 1 divided by 1.1 minus 1. Okay. This is what I want, isn't it? So, this is nothing but substitute the value. Actually, f of x is x square. So, f of 1.1 means 1.1 whole square minus f of 1 would be 1 square divided by denominator is actually simply 1.1 minus 1. Okay, so this is nothing but you can uh, see since this question can be asked in CET, I will not allow you to use calculator here. Okay, so 1.1 square is nothing but 11 square. We know 11 square is 121. So 1.1 square is nothing but 1.21. Okay, minus what is 1 square? No doubt it is 1 divided by you, you can subtract this 1.1 minus 1 is nothing but 0 0.1 is it clear so this is nothing but 1.21 minus 1 will give me actually it is 0.21 isn't it 0.21 divided by if you want you can rewrite this as 0 0.10 because after decimal point after characteristic digit 1 does not have any value so this can actually be written as 21 by 10 if you multiply by 100 on both for numerator and denominator you are going to get 21 by 10 this is actually nothing but 2.1 so the value of f of 1.1 minus f of 1 divided by 1.1 minus 1 is simply 2.1 okay so the for all the values it may not be same for this particular value and for this particular function the value is 2.1 okay very simple question and we have concluded the solution. Okay. So let's go on to the next question. So this is also a very important question. The question number three, find the domain of the function f of x is equal to, it's a rational function, some function by another function, x, x square plus 2x plus 1 divided by x square minus 8x plus 12. We know this is actually a rational function. You might have seen the definition of a rational function. Whenever you see f of f by g, you will definitely see g not equal to 0 because if g is equal to 0, then the function will not be defined at all. Okay. So if this function has to be defined, then the denominator should not be equal to 0. Okay. Now check for what values the denominator will be 0 and take away those values. Okay, it is just like how many students have failed in the uh, class. Just take away, uh, if you find out how many students have passed, then you can, identify, you can identify how many have failed. Okay, in the same way, check for what values the denominator will be zero. Take out those values from the real numbers and that will be the domain of the function. Okay, so let us consider this way. So let us consider the denominator term that is x square minus 8x plus 12 is equal to 0. Let us find the values of 8. Okay. So this is a factorization process that is factorizes minus 8x should be factorized in such a way that the product should be 12 into x square. Okay. So 
and again it is positive 12 into x square i am going to split it as minus 6x and minus 2x this is just for your uh, simplification x square minus 6x minus 2x plus 12 is equal to 0 so if you take the x common from first two terms x minus 6 is left over if you take minus 2 common in both the terms only x is left over minus of minus will give me plus 2 6 is a will give me 12 okay in both the terms x minus 6 is common and here i have x minus 2 is equal to 0 okay therefore i'll get x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 2 uh, means for x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 2 the denominator will become 0 okay that means i have to take out these two particular values from the real numbers that will be the domain of the given function okay so please check it here so domain is given by we know usually we write it as d of f domain of f is nothing but the entire real numbers minus whichever values which will make the denominator 0 which is 2 comma 6 that is the set which is taking out the elements 2 and 6 so this will be the domain of the given rational function okay please note it down any similar function again i'm telling you this is very important for cet any similar function just take denominator equal to 0 take out those values from the real numbers that will give us the domain okay right let's move on to the next question so the next question we have is i have taken the question number five because it's very simple find the domain and range of the real function f defined by f of x is equal to mod of x minus 1 actually this function is actually similar very similar to the modulus function f of x is equal to mod x okay family of modulus function these are now you can check here f of x which is x modulus of x minus 1 is defined this is actually for defined for all values of x which belongs to real numbers okay there is no uh, value of x for which the function is not defined okay therefore the domain will be the complete real numbers therefore what is the domain domain d of the function is nothing but complete real numbers because this function is defined for all values of x which are real numbers okay now let us check for the range now what about the range now com coming to the range look at the function the function is a modulus function so for a modulus function the range will be all non-negative real numbers is it clear the range of this function also will be non-negative real numbers so that is you can write range of f is nothing but non-negative real numbers or else you can also write this as non-negative means it is actually 0 to infinity these are actually non-negative real numbers is it clear so this will be the range for this given function f of x is equal to mod of x minus 1 okay so this concludes the solution for question number 5 let's go to the next question now look at this question question number 4 this is actually similar this looks similar to the previous question but uh, there are a lot of differences find the domain and range of the real function f defined by f of x is equal to root of x minus 1 the previous question was mod of x minus 1 but this is root of x minus 1 okay now what is the uh, domain and range of this function now look here for this function f of x is equal to root of x minus 1 to be real for function the inside term should be a positive number okay so now look here so what i'm about to say here f of x which is more root of x minus 1 is defined for all x belongs to real numbers except for what values it is not defined for x minus 1 less than 0 this is function is not defined okay that is for x less than 1 what does this mean means x should definitely be greater than 1 okay strictly it should strictly not be less than 1 that means it can be 1 and so on okay therefore the domain will be 1 and thereafter so the domain of the function d of f is given by what do you mean by 1 and thereafter it should strictly be less than strictly less than 1 is not allowed means 
so one and above is allowed so that is nothing but the domain is nothing but one to infinity okay so this is how we calculate the uh, functions their domain particularly if you have root functions okay now let us go for finding out the range now look here we know f of x is equal to y therefore i can write y is equal to root of x minus 1 isn't it now take the square here i'll get y square is equal to x square minus 1 isn't it or i can write therefore i'll take y square plus 1 is nothing but x square or i can take oh, sorry y square plus 1 okay is it clear with root sorry students there is a small mistake this is actually not x square just x isn't it so take the square y square will be x minus 1 therefore y square plus 1 will be equal to x take away the, this uh, and this is not required again so I have made some small changes here I have a uh, I can also write or I can take x is equal to y square plus 1 now you can see here for whatever values of x you put you will get y square plus 1 okay definitely f of x is f of x is greater than or equal to 0 isn't it we have f of x is greater than or equal to 0 this implies f of x means what y square plus 1 isn't it so that is nothing but y square plus 1 is greater than or equal to so look here students f of x is strictly greater than or equal to 0 means it's a real positive number now look here if f of x is greater than or equal to 0 then y square plus 1 you whatever you give the value of y this will strictly break greater than or equal to not 0 it is 1 i repeat y square plus 1 will be strictly greater than or equal to 1 okay therefore my range will be what now if you take 1 on both sides your y square will be greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 that will become 0 or y will be greater than or equal to 0 are you actually range will uh, x value will uh, our x value will decide the domain and uh, y value of the function will decide will decide its range so y should be greater than or equal to 0 repeat greater than or equal to 0 therefore range is nothing but greater than or equal to 0 means 0 to infinity are you following therefore range will be given by so range will be given by we know it is r of f again i repeat it is greater than or equal to 0 means 0 to infinity please note it down dear students the value of x of the function will decide the domain of the function and the value of y will decide the range of the function okay so that's it this is the solution for the above given question okay so let's move on to the next one so let's check the question number seven it's a very simple question and very important for first puc also okay in the main exam many times they've asked this question for two marks let f and g be real valued function from r to r defined by respectively by f of x is equal to x plus one please be careful f of x is defined as x plus one and g of x is defined as 2x minus three okay find f plus g f minus g f by g okay so f plus g of x we know this is actually very simply f of x plus g of x so this is nothing but what is f of x it is x plus 1 plus please use the brackets 2x minus 3 okay so this can be simplified further simplified as x plus 2x that is nothing but 3x and 1 minus 3 this is nothing but minus 2 okay so f plus g is nothing but 3x minus 2 okay now this is actually for all real numbers this is actually for all real numbers similarly if you take f minus g of x so similarly f minus g of x is f of x minus g of x this is actually very simple question you don't need anything just simplification so it is x plus 1 minus of 2x minus 3 okay so this is nothing but now look here x minus 2x x minus 2x will be minus x and this is plus 1 
minus of minus please be careful minus of minus 3 so 1 plus 3 is nothing but 4 is it it so this is actually minus x plus 4 okay or else if you this can also be written as if you want 4 minus x so f plus g is 3x minus 2 f minus g is 4 minus x Le similarly let us find f by g so th going on to the third one okay f by g of x is nothing but very simple it is f of x by g of x so we you know the algebra algeb algebra of real functions so this is the rule so what is f of x it is actually x plus 1 divided by 2x minus 3 okay you cannot uh, divide it completely just keep it as it is okay just for our reference if we want we can also find f into g of x okay so according to the definition f into g of x is nothing but f of x into g of x that is nothing but take the multiplication f of x is equal to x plus 1 into g of x is equal to 2x minus 3 you can keep it as it is or else if you want you can multiply and keep the simplified solution that is up to you okay very simple question and we have completed the solution of this one also let us go further okay students here comes question number eight let f which is 1 1 2 3 0 minus 1 minus 1 minus 3 be a function from z to z defined by f of x is equal to ax plus b for some integers a and b determine a and b okay so let us note down the data he has given f is a function from z to z that means integers to integers it is defined by f of x is equal to ax plus b okay we know f of x is equal to y therefore i can take y is equal to ax plus b you can take it as equation one now uh, i can take any two points and find the value of a and b it is always better if you can con uh, consider first any uh, ordered pair which has zero because that will make your work easy okay so let's see how, how i'm going to solve it here or therefore i can take 0 comma minus 1 this belongs to f okay what does 0 comma minus 1 belongs to f this implies this point will satisfy this equation so y is nothing but minus 1 okay this is nothing but what is x value x value is 0 so it is a into 0 plus b okay therefore you have minus 1 is equal to a into 0 is 0 plus b this will give me the value of b is minus 1 i have directly got it because one element is 0 now let me take the second point whichever you want out of these given points this is very simple 1 comma 1 if you want you can take any other point also it's up to you you can check it with any other point you will get the same answer let me consider 1 comma 1 now so y is 1 a into x is 1 okay plus b i want the value of a isn't it so this is nothing but 1 is equal to 1 into a is a now what is actually b value b value will substitute as minus 1 okay therefore the value of a sorry the value of a is nothing but take this one to the my uh, uh, left hand side it will get 1 plus 1 that is equal to 2 therefore the value of a is nothing but 2 and the value of b is equal to minus 1 so that is the required solution for this question again i'm telling you dear students this is important question for your first pc main exam also sometimes they've asked this question for two marks okay so we have concluded this question let us go further so this is question number 10 for you let a is equal to set 1 2 3 4 set b is equal to 1 5 9 11 15 and 16 and there is a function given this you can check whether it is a function or relation he has given f is equal to 1 5 2 9 3 1 4 5 2 11 are the following true there are two given statements one below the other let me take one by one by one you have to justify your answer the first question is f is a relation from a to b now he has given this is a relation now you have to tell me whether this is a relation whether it is true or false now you can check here this is actually a subset of a cross b okay whatever f is given this is a subset of a cross b therefore definitely this is a relation okay 
it is true okay this is true because you can write what is the condition is nothing but the reason the reason is f is a subset of okay a cross b okay now this is the reason this is enough for uh, you to write the conclusion justify this is the justification we are given he has asked you to justify your answer we have given the justification f is a subset subset of a cross b we know relation is a subset of the cross product cartesian product okay now let us take the second uh, condition now we have checked that this f is a relation but is it a function from a to b is asking so he is asking me whether it is a function from a to b okay so that means let me take the pictorial representation that will give us the clear picture okay so what is actually the set a let me take this as f this is a and this is b the elements in f a, a is nothing but 1 2 3 and 4 Elements in B is one, five, nine, eleven, fifteen, and sixteen. Okay, so let me take the elements of F and tell me whether they are. Uh, this is a function. Let us map it. One is mapped to five. Okay. Next, two is mapped to nine. Three is mapped to one. Okay. Now four is mapped to five. Two is mapped to eleven. Finally, actually that is the relation he has given. Now is it a function? First of all, I need not worry whether the elements are left over in the codomain set. That is not a problem. Here no elements are left over. First condition is satisfied. But you can see here. uh element 5 is the image of 1 and 4 even this is allowed two different elements can have the same image but the problem is element 2 element 2 has two images which is nothing but 9 and 11 this is actually not possible element 2 having two different images is not possible therefore f is not a function is it clear please note down the conclusion why we are saying this okay so this is the answer first of all no The, the condition is not true f is not a function from a to b can you give me the reason reason is so the reason is quite simple the element 2 in the a set has two images this is actually not allowed for a function okay so that is why we have told you f is not a function from a to b okay so this concludes the solution of question number 10 also so here comes question number 12 Let a set A is given nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen, and let f is a function from this set A to the set of natural numbers. Be careful, a to n be defined by f of n means actually this is the first element will be from this element. The second element for x, y will be such that the highest prime factor of n. What is the y value? X value will be from these elements. the ordered pair y value will be the highest prime factor of the elements taken find the range of f okay please be very careful it's a very simple question but a challenging one okay now look here so a is set is given from 9 to elements 13 he has given f is a function from set a to the set of natural numbers okay now let me write try to write the uh, function here Okay, so how do you write the function f is equal to every ordered pair? So let me write the element nine. Now what is actually this is n, and this is uh, y value is nothing but f of n. Remember the function f will be such that if you take the element n, then its ordered pair would be f of n. Okay, so this is how you are going to write the ordered pairs. Okay. Now what is actually nine? F of nine is nothing but the highest prime factor of nine. What is the highest prime factor of nine? The factors of nine is actually one, three, five. Okay, out of sorry, five is not a prime factor. The factors of oh, nine are one, three, and nine. Out of one, three, and nine, the highest prime is nothing but three because nine is not prime. Okay. Similarly, for ten, the factors are one, two, five. Is and ten out of these the highest prime is five. Okay, 
Now for 11, the this is actually a prime number. The factors are 1 and 11. Highest prime is 11. For 12, the factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. Out of these, the prime uh, highest prime would be nothing but you can check you will have a 5 is not a factor. It is 3, isn't it? 3 is a highest prime factor for 12. Similarly, for 13, since 13 is a prime number, the highest prime would be 13. So if you can write this function, then you can easily write the range of this function. Okay. Once this is right, you will never go wrong in writing the range. Now range is given by the range of f usually we denoted by r of f. This is nothing but we all know second elements in the ordered pair. So that is nothing but 3, next 5, 11, 3 is already taken down, 13. So this is the range set for this given function. Okay, very simple question, but a challenging one. Okay, right, uh, dear students. Uh, in this exercise, I'm going to give two questions for you as in homework, which is question number nine and question number 11. They are quite simple. I'm going to give that question as a homework for you. And I'm going to solve one last question, which is the question number six. Okay, so while solving this, that question, we shall wind up the solution. Sorry, video. So here comes the question number six, dear students. This is actually the most challenging question in this exercise. I'm not going to say most difficult, but rather most challenging. Okay. So let F, this is the ordered pair given X comma X square divided by one plus X square. The, actually, this is nothing but Y for all X belongs to R. Be a function from R into R. Okay. Determine the range of F. You have to find the range. Okay. Now what he has given? F is a function from set of real numbers into the set of real numbers. Okay. Now you can see a note down here. Y is actually nothing but X square divided by 1 plus X square. Okay. From this, I actually want the value of X. Let us cross multiply. Therefore, Y into 1 plus X square is nothing but X square. If you split this, you will get Y plus y into x square is nothing but x square. Let us bring this y to the right hand side. So y is equal to, uh, sorry, I can write, I can write x square minus y into x square, isn't it? Therefore, we will get y is equal to in both the terms, I, x square is common. I can take 1 minus y. Therefore, y divided by 1 minus y is equal to x square or I can say x is equal to plus or minus root of y divided by 1 minus y. So this is all about a simple simplification. So I've got the value of x is nothing but plus or minus root of y divided by 1 minus y. Okay. Now we all know this is a root function. You can take it as equation one. This function will be defined only for y divided by one minus y should be greater than zero. Isn't it? Or else I can say this is defined for all y except this value less than zero. Isn't it? Look here what I'm going to write. So this is a very important condition you have to note. So x is defined for all values of real numbers except this entire term less than zero for this term less than zero, the function will not be defined. So that means what do you mean by one? Sorry, y divided by one minus y less than zero. So this will be imply, okay, y less than zero if you cross multiply, okay, y is less than zero and this is not defined for y is less than zero and one minus y also less than zero. Or I can say if you cross multiply this actually it becomes zero and we also know that your uh, denominator term should not be equal to zero, isn't it? So that means one minus y should not be equal to zero. That is if I take y to the, uh, the other side, y should one is not equal to y or I can say y should not be equal to one. Please be very careful for y. Okay, less than zero, it is not defined. So that means 
it is defined for y greater than 0 but y should not be equal to 1 please uh, club those these two condition and write the solution so what do you mean by clubbing these two equations so x is defined for all x if what y can strictly less than 0 is not permitted that means y can be greater than or equal to 0 strictly less than 0 is not permitted means y can be greater than or equal to 1 and one more condition is y should not be equal to 1 okay for these two conditions okay therefore i can write my range now so the range of this special function is given by as i told you we write a range of f this is given by every value of r but oh, sorry every value of y such that y will lie between 0 to 1 but y should be strictly less than y y cannot take the value of 1 please be careful since y cannot take the value of 1 i will take minus 1 to sorry 0 to 1 but not equal to 1 is it clear this is actually this is just like i can also say this is closed interval 0 and open interval 1 this is the value for which y belongs to is it clear therefore dear, dear students this will conclude all the solutions uh, of the questions from exercise which is miscellaneous exercise from chapter 2 which is relations and functions okay hope you have enjoyed this video and also learned some tricky questions in this chapter uh, don't forget to share this video with, with all of your friends so that it would be useful even for them and uh, dear students so before i say uh, bye to you we are going to meet once again in the next video where we will be dealing with uh, the exercise from the next chapter okay so thanks for watching the video we will meet you again in the next video until then take care god bless you all bye